In this section, we will take a detailed look at layers. Layers offer one of the greatest advantages to making art on a computer because they allow you to separate the overlapping objects in your composition into individual elements which can be manipulated in various ways. For example, you can change the size, position, or color of an object in your painting. You can do a lot with layers, and by using them, you can make your digital painting experience a lot less frustrating. I've opened the snow globe template. This is an example of a painting which uses a lot of layers. The snowman is a group of layers, and within the snowman group, there's a layer for the nose. I can hide the visibility of the nose to remove it. There are also layers for the scarf, the arms, and so on. I can move the whole snowman group if I want to experiment with different positions for him. I can even move objects on the z-axis, which allows me to put the snowman layers behind the tree layers. Layers give me an incredible amount of flexibility to compose my piece. By using layers, I can freely experiment without having to worry about making mistakes. If you are not happy with a layer, you can correct it or delete it. You don't have to worry about hurting the other elements in your painting that you are satisfied with. Layers are your friend, so don't be afraid to use them. I have layers for everything in this painting. The snow, the tree, the globe, the wrinkles on the scarf. It's not uncommon for me to use 50 or more layers when I'm working on a complex painting. You might not want to deal with half a million layers, but it doesn't hurt to use at least a few. For instance, when you're drawing a sketch for your painting, you could put the sketch on a separate layer. That will allow you to move the sketch around your composition, make it larger or smaller, or even remove it when you no longer need the layer. Or as we've looked at in previous lessons, you can use layers to keep your color separate from your line work. This will give you the flexibility to change the fill colors or shade within the cells without affecting the lines. You can control many of the layer properties in the layers panel. This is a very important panel, therefore it's always visible in my workspace. In order to assist me in this exploration of layers, I've enlisted my friend Layers Dude. As you can see, he is made from a bunch of layers. There's a layer for his hair, his eyes, his mouth, and so on. There are also layers for yellow, blue, and red balls, which we will use throughout these demonstrations. By default, I'm only showing the names of the layers, but if you like, you can show a visual example of what's on each layer by going to the Layers Panel Options menu and choosing the thumbnail size you prefer. I'll go ahead and show a thumbnail for this demonstration. Otherwise, I prefer no thumbnail, because once I've labeled each layer, I don't need to see a smaller image of what's on it. That just wastes space in the layers palette. As you can see, the thumbnail for the shirt shows a tiny image of what's on that layer. The layers in the layers palette are presented in sort of an overhead view. The bottom of the layers palette is the background, or the plane that's furthest away from you. And at the top of the layers palette, is the plane or the object that's closest to you. If you can imagine you're standing right in front of Layers Dude, he's in between you and the background. And the colored balls are in between yourself and Layers Dude. If I want to move the blue ball behind Layers Dude, I'll need to select that layer, and then use the Layer Adjuster tool to move it about where I want it. And now to move it backward on the Z-axis, I need to drag that layer down in the Layers palette and release it beneath the body. Now when I move that blue ball around, you can see that it is behind Layers Dude. And if I want to bring it back in front of him, I just drag that layer to the foreground or the top of the Layers palette. As we looked at earlier, I can also group layers together. For instance, I have all of these head layers grouped together. I can still manipulate each layer independently, but the advantage to having them in a group is that now I can transform all the layers simultaneously. I'll perform a free transform and choose the rotate mode. I'll move the reference point onto the neck, and then I will rotate the head to put it at an angle. I could even use layers in this way to create frames for an animation. Once I apply that transformation, I've modified all of those head layers together. If I want to rearrange layers on the X and Y axis, I can select the blue ball and then drag it around using the layer adjuster tool. I can select multiple layers by holding down Ctrl on my keyboard and clicking. I'll add the red ball to my selection. You can see both layers are selected and highlighted in the Layers palette. If I want to temporarily hide multiple layers, I can click on the eyeball to make them all invisible. I can also hide entire groups if I like. 
And if I don't want layers anymore, I can delete them. Once removed from the layers palette, those layers are removed from my painting. I can bring deleted layers back as long as I'm able to undo to the point before I remove them. In order to save your layers, you'll need to go to Save As and choose a file format that supports layers, such as Painter Riff, Photoshop PSD, or TIFF. The other formats will flatten your image to a single layer, so if you ever need to save your layered artwork as PNG or JPEG, make sure you're saving a copy. There are some layer types that are proprietary to Corel Painter, such as watercolor, thick paint, and liquid ink layers. We'll be discussing these in more detail in later lessons. There are other types of specialty layers as well, but your basic layer is going to be compatible with most art applications. If you save as a PSD or TIFF, you can manipulate those default layers in other applications, such as Photoshop. Now that I gave you an overview of working with layers, let's get hands-on by creating and manipulating some layers. I can create a new layer from the bottom of the Layers palette by clicking on one of the four new layer icons. When I click on the default new layer button, that adds a new layer above whichever layer was currently selected. Since I had the head group selected, the new layer went above that. Had I selected a layer within a group, that layer would be created within the group. I'll toggle that head group open by clicking on the triangle, and I want to drag that new layer into that group. I'll place it above the face layer, and I'll name that layer Beard. I'll select Black, and choose the Smooth Scratchboard brush. Now I'll draw in a beard on Layers Dude. Because that beard is on a separate layer, I can show and hide it, free transform it, change the color of it, or delete it. I can change the name of the layer by double clicking on it. I'll call it facial hair. As far as naming layers, just name them whatever you think is going to help you understand what's on that layer. I can look at the eyes layer and I instantly know what's on it. If I only have layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, that makes it very difficult to know what's on your layers and you'll have to rely on memory or fumble with hiding and showing the layers to sort things out. You will get into situations where you don't know what to name a layer in that case, just use whatever label works for you. For example, it may suffice to create a label based on the color of the object. You don't have to use really long labels for your layers. You can feel free to abbreviate. For example, rather than texture, I'll use text, or instead of background, I'll use BG. Rather than facial hair, I could just call the layer F hair. I'll delete that layer. While layers can be very useful, they can also be difficult to work with if you don't pay careful attention to which layer you're painting on. For example, I might want to add some more hair to Layers Dude. I'll extend his hair over his eyes, but I accidentally painted on the face layer. If I wasn't aware of this, then I'd be in for a surprise later on. If I hide the hair layer, you can see that I've ruined my face layer. If I am fortunate enough to be able to undo to before I added the hair, then I can redraw the hair on the correct layer. If I can't undo, then I have no choice but to repaint the face to fix it, and then redraw the hair on the correct layer. In either case, I've just wasted time. This is precisely why it's important to pay careful attention to which layer you're painting on, and labeling your layers helps you keep track of that. Even so, I've been working with Corel Painter for a long time, and I've created many paintings. Despite all of that experience, I sometimes accidentally paint on the wrong layer, so don't feel bad because it happens to all of us. Oftentimes, you will have accidentally painted on a blank area of the layer. If that happens, you can easily make a selection of the misplaced pixels and then cut and paste them above the correct layer. Then just merge those two layers together. One thing that you can do to prevent painting on the wrong layer is to lock the layers you are not working on. You can do that by clicking the lock icon at the bottom of the layers panel that adds a lock icon next to the layer to indicate it is locked. You can also click on that lock to unlock the layer, and by clicking in that same spot, you can lock it again. If I try to paint on a locked layer, a warning message appears letting me know the layer is locked and I cannot paint on it. You can also lock groups, and you can even lock the canvas layer. I'll lock all of the layers except the hair layer. And now, even if I accidentally select the face layer, I am unable to paint on it. To unlock all the layers at once, choose Unlock All Layers from the Layers Palette Options menu. It can feel tedious to have to lock and unlock layers while you're working, 
so it's better to just pay attention to which layer is selected before you paint. Hidden layers are locked by default, so you won't be able to paint on a hidden layer even if you try. This is helpful for preventing accidental marks on your canvas. When layers are locked, you will not be able to merge them or perform a drop all. You'll need to unlock those layers first. You can watch the second half of this lesson along with the rest of this course by purchasing it from my website at aaronrutten.com.